Hello, Pastor Swiss Bongo GRC residents over there. I hope uh, you can see us from there and over here as well because uh, it's a long line over there. So I just want to acknowledge you. Good evening to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to be here in Pastor uh, making my rally speech a second time here. And um, just want to let you know that uh, in the past five years, I'm nowhere near here. I was in Pongo South working hard as an MP there and uh, that was an area taken over by whom I actually gladly call my uncle Mr. Charles Chong whom I learned a lot from and uh, that's why today I also wear the button if you never see this before vote for Charles Chong <laughs> yeah Lao Bei eh? now he has a new name called Lao Bei so I won't call him uncle anymore you see um, this election I got a mixed feeling uh, one of the reasons why is because I truly miss Pongo South and the grassroots leaders that worked with me for the past five years. And I want to take this chance because the last rally speech for this GE to thank all the grassroots leaders who have so supported me in implementing so many plans in Pongo South and to help me in making a difference in that area. Thank you, Pongo South grassroots. Thank you, Pongo South grassroots leaders and the branch activists. And I also want to thank the residents of Pongo South as well, if any one of you are here today. This campaigning period was a uh, truly an awareness uh, period for me because I'm looking into an area called Pongo Central. Past three residents do bear with me as I would like to talk about the Sengkang town for a while. Pongo Central is very well run by Charles before he was asked to leave. Um, to go and contest in Juchet. And I can tell you, Pongo Central or the Senkang Town itself, Senkang Central itself is right at the heart of the Senkang Town. And this is really exciting. To me, it's a nerve center. I did a couple of block visits, did a lot of work about. It was more, it was more like a walk to understand what are the things that the residents need. There's so many. And they have told me a lot of requests. Some posted their requests on a Facebook, I have to thank them. It was, um, it was things like other parking lots, or covered laneways, amenities and all. I think all are necessary. Maybe small to many, but I think it's important enough for us as MPs to do something about it and to make it better and a better living environment for all of them. I think for me, in the next five years, is to make sure that Sengkang Town can become an integrated town with a caring community. It is a town in the central area where the flats are more than 10 years old. I think it's time to be able to renew or rejuvenate it. I think we should build more facilities, amenities, even make, have more R&R &R projects within the central area. And I intend to actually start off and initiate a few things that I would like to propose. I think a lot of uh, cyclists are here and I think no passeries is already becoming is already known to be a cycling town. But in central area, in Sengkang, where the amenities are so integrated and dense, I think it is interesting to be able to have dedicated cycling track connecting from place to place where you can cycle from home to where you want to go and back. I think it's important to do that. I've seen a lot of cyclists around instead of cycling on the road, maybe we can think about designing dedicated cycling tracks for our residents over there. And not to forget, there are some of the things that will be built in the next one or two years. If you have heard some parliamentary speeches by Charles and my answers to him was that he has been fighting very hard for the overhead bridge connecting to the Sengkang MRT station. He wanted a lift on the pedestrian overhead bridge. It was important because there was an escalator going up but there was no lift to bring them down. So Mr. Charles Chong, he said, he was telling me in parliament that, you know, my residents are hanging in the air. What are you going to do about it? Well, I told him and I promised him that we'll build a bridge, uh, no, we'll build a lift for the pedestrian overhead bridge to bring the residents down so that it can benefit the handicapped disabled and even the elderly. I think for a town that is over 10 years old, you're going to have more and more elderly. 
because you're going to have more and more elderly when we with green population there's more needs to have barrier free access i think this is something that i will look into and look at the different towns and look at the barrier free access where it makes sure that it's comprehensive enough not only that i think there's a need for an elderly wellness center i set up an elderly wellness center in Pongo south that has today more than 2,000 members of elderly and i think there's a need to have such centers all around Wellness centers provide daycare services. It also provides many other befriender services and also social enterprise services where they make things and they can sell them. So I thought it would be appropriate to have such an elderly wellness center as well as to provide medical services within the elderly wellness center. And because we have a big CC there, there's a lot of potential to expand and to develop this type of centers. There are many, many other plans. We will continue to do our best. Like this week, you probably heard a lot of apologies and confessions and that we are not perfect. And it's the same. We will continue to evolve and make sure that we touch all grounds, cover all areas. There are many things that we can do with hardware, but I think in all towns, software is also important. I mentioned that I hope to develop Sengkang Town into an integrated town or a state with a caring community. What does caring community mean? It really means to have many people out there helping one another and their certain self-reliance. Many of you may know that uh, MCYS, the ministry where I came from, has a many helping hands approach. And I think not all policies are perfect. Many policies still need to be improved. There will always be room for improvement. We, we must always update policies. The many helping hands policy approach for helping the needy is to encourage all the VWOs and all the helping hands to be able to help somebody in need. Make sure you reach out to them and make sure they can come forward. You see, there's an incident that got me thinking which actually rolled out several schemes. I went on a block visit and I came to this house. Knock on the door, the lady came out, probably the mother of the family. And what happened was that when I was shaking her hands and I was talking to her, I actually saw this man, presumably her husband, lying, lying down on the floor. And he was crouching in pain, holding her stomach, really in pain. And I can tell, because he, he didn't look too well. And there were three kids over there, studying. So I talked to her, I said that, uh, can I also meet your husband? And she was saying maybe it's not too convenient. I, I talked to her a bit more. I realized that they have a story behind it. The man actually had cancer. And he was he has actually colon cancer. So he was holding his stomach. It's really painful. And it's rolling there. And I asked her, I said that do you see undergoing chemo? And she said no. I said, why not? Then, you know, and you diagnose with cancer, you should uh, you should uh, go through the diet. Diagnosis, if it's proven it's cancer, you should go through chemo. She said that he doesn't want to go to chemotherapy because he's afraid to lose his job. Because you don't want to cure your illness and you're afraid to lose your job. I find it difficult. I find it difficult to accept that. And I'm, I, was, I kept asking myself and my grassroots leaders as well, why? Why did this happen? Are we not reaching out enough? Singapore is prosperous enough, and what happened to them? We've got to have programs, we've got to have assistance schemes to be able to help these people, right? Why is he afraid to lose his job? Because they're financially strained. Well, let me move forward to it. Of course, I, I look into the case in a very detail to get my grassroots leaders and my branch activists, and what we tried to do, what we tried to do was to make sure that we gave them enough assistance so we told the man that you don't have to worry we will tie you over this financial strain we'll provide them financial assistance at the same time we encourage the wife who was a homemaker to work and we found her a job and through the project success and actually we also make sure that the children's education are taken care of so that he can have a peace of mind to go through the chemotherapy. I'm very happy to say that today, 
they are all well, and he's undergoing chemotherapy because there was a relapse. I wish the best for him. Because of that, we set up a scheme called We Care, and it was set up by the MPs here as well as Four Temples and the CDC. It helps people beyond thousand five hundred dollars benchmark of the low income, so which means that even if you are earning above thousand five, up to two thousand, two thousand five, you could get help because cost of living is also rising, and we want to make sure that we cover all gap so that no one can fall through the gap, and we help all families. There's already a lot of warnings, <laughs> so I better stop. And I just want to say that this story just want to tell you how committed we are, how dedicated we are, and we want to help every needy families out there, even the middle income. We'll do our best. And as you know, there's a lot of policy will be reviewed, as promised by the prime minister and the different ministers, that to help the middle income family. And rest assured, we are with you through thick or thin. Please vote for the P.